What is going on you guys? Today in this video, we're gonna talk about how you separate hosting from your email hosting. It's very common that when you buy hosting from a hosting company, typically you keep your web hosting and your email hosting together. Now, not everybody wants to do that though, and sometimes you wanna separate those and have your email hosted in one location and have your website hosted in another. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, but before I do that, uh, the kind of the concepts and the things I'm gonna talk about today requires some kind of uh, background knowledge or additional knowledge talking about DNS. So some things we're gonna to need to know about are DNS, DNS records, and name servers. And I've already done videos on all of those, so I'm gonna link all three of those videos down in the description first. If you're not familiar with that, please go watch those first three videos. They're very short, two to three minutes each. Watch those first and then come back and watch this video. I promise you it's gonna make a lot more sense. Okay, so now that we're all on the same page about DNS, DNS records, and name servers, let's talk about how you separate your email hosting and your web hosting. Now, first off though, why would you even want to do that? The reason for that is a lot of the times, like I said, when you purchase your web hosting, you get email hosting with it. But in my opinion, it's kind of, most of the time it's pretty clunky. Like the web interface that you log into to check your email, it's very dated. Um, it doesn't have a lot of the features like Gmail or, you know, just some of those other nice things. So if you want to use the email hosting with your website, typically what you have to do is you either have to link your email to your phone or connect it to Outlook or, you know, some other third party program to be able to check your email and get all those features that you want. Now, some companies and some clients, they just don't want that. They want to be able to log into an interface similar to Gmail and manage everything from there. Now, the cool thing though, is there's something called G Suite. It's a service offered by Google where you can connect uh, your email to work with Google's servers and you get access to all of Google's features like Google Drive, Google Calendar, uh, Google Contacts, like everything that Google offers, but it can be catered perfectly for your business. Now, again, some people don't need that, but some people want that. They wanna be able to log into any computer in the world. Like if they're at a hotel, for example, they can go down to the hotel lobby, log into their G Suite email. It looks just like Gmail. They can do everything that they need from there. Again, it's a little bit expensive. Some clients don't need that. Some people don't want that, but that's what we're gonna talk about today is how to physically separate those two. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, we understand what we're doing. Let's say that we have a, a domain, for example, it was just example.com. What we wanna do is we wanna leave our website completely intact. We don't want to touch it. We don't want to mess up anything, but we want to point our email elsewhere. Now, how do we go about doing that? And the way that we do that is by something called MX records. I, I touch on those briefly in the DNS video. Again, watch that if you haven't before. Before we jump into the computer and actually show you how to physically separate things, again, I wanna go over conceptually what's happening. And so I'm gonna draw that out. So let's say for example, that we've got our domain. And again, it's example.com. So after we have our domain, we know that from the other videos that uh, that you already watched, we take a domain and we point its name servers wherever we want the DNS to be looked up from. And again, if that doesn't make sense, let's, let's talk about this. So we've got our domain and we point this to wherever our name servers are. Now the name servers, that's just the company that hosts your DNS. It can be any name server in the world. Lots of times I'll point my name servers to uh, DigitalOcean. You can point your servers to AWS. Um, I, my web hosting company, I use A2 Hosting. Um, and most of the time I point my DNS to those name servers just so I can control everything from there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, wherever you decide to point your name servers, uh, that's gonna who's that's who's gonna control the DNS. Now, once, uh, once somebody types in their browser example.com, the browser is gonna do all this behind the scenes. The browser is gonna say, okay, where does example.com live? So it's gonna look up, it's gonna find where those name servers are, and then it's going to look at the DNS lookup table. And this, again, is very simple, like, it's a very simplified uh, example. It's a little more complicated behind the scenes, but it, it's okay, for our purposes, this will be fine. So it's going to look at our uh, DNS table. Now the A record, for example, this is where our website lives. The A record is what your browser is going to look up and it's gonna say, hey, where should I go look for this website? And usually it's gonna be a server like 13, 31, 42.93. So what's gonna happen is when you go to example.com in your browser, it's gonna say, hey, where are the name servers? Once it knows where the name servers are, it's going to look up and try to find the A record 
for example.com. Now the exact same thing happens when you're trying to send an email to somebody, but it's possible to separate these on two different servers. So let's say I have an MX record, and again, an MX record is where you look for email, and we could have this as 13.31. Dot 42.93. Dot so when you have example.com, it's going to go look up these name servers and it says, okay, I'm going to go look right here. And then it's going to say, okay, if I want to send an email to John at example.com, it's going to look up this MX record and send the email to this server. Now, the cool thing though, is if we want to separate our email and our website and have them be on two separate locations, two separate servers, we can do that. All we have to do is we have to change this MX record. So we can have a, add a different MX record and we can change this to 46.92.31.14 or whatever the IP address is, whatever. Actually, when we set up a G Suite, for example, you don't actually use IP addresses and I'll show you that in just a second. So now if I go to example.com, it's going to take me to this A record, but if I wanna send an email, it's going to not use this MX record, it's gonna use this MX record and know to send it to there. So you can have two different servers in two separate locations for your name servers and your DNS. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's jump into my computer and we'll show you a real live example of how this is working. Okay, so I'm in my cPanel right now and this is for a, a client that I was working on this week as I mentioned earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in DNS here and I'm gonna to go to zone editor. And if I go to manage, I can see here, you can filter by A records, uh, your IPv6, we're not gonna worry about that, C names, and MX records. So the nice thing is if you look right here, so Textile Graphics, again, this is a client that I'm working for, they're a clothing company, and their, uh, their server is this address right here. So when you type in textilegraphics.com in your browser, it resolves that to this IP address of 13, 248, yada, yada. This is not sensitive information. Some people are like, oh, why are you showing that publicly? No, it, it doesn't matter. Anybody can go and look up this information. That's It's totally safe. Now, the nice thing though, is if I look up MX, you can see here that their email is not pointed to that same IP address that I just really showed you. Instead, it's pointed to Google's servers. And in fact, you can find this information very easily if you open a new tab and just search Google and we type um, G Suite MX records. You can click on this first link right here and they're gonna show you these are all of the records that you need to add in order to point your email to them. Now, of course, you do have to pay for a G Suite address, but behind the scenes with the MX records and everything, that's all you have to do. So in my, my zone editor, my DNS records, I can see that I've got everything pointed to uh, Google servers instead of the same server as the website. Okay, that's really all it is. It's very simple. Once you make these changes, typically you have to wait, you know, I don't know, an hour or two for DNS to kind of catch up and propagate throughout the rest of the world. But after you make these changes, you're set and you're good to go. So I hope that's not too confusing. Uh, it's, it's actually very simple behind the scenes what's going on. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Happy to help out the best I can. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.